can I just I just want to quickly introduce uh, introduce from our sure, side. Sure, go So we've got we've got uh, uh, Gerard from the Gerard from from the architect. So he's he's from Bookerman. So he's obviously the sort of brainchild behind the overall project. And then the 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 skylight here to put up with us on the on with the skylight side. Um, and then we've got so Marcel, as you guys know, is from TAS. So 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 TAS obviously fabricated the the steelwork. On on Leith side, we've got myself, and then we've got Tembakazi and Admire. So Tembakazi is a detailer, so she was involved with a lot of the detailing, but but also also on the upfront development of the concept with 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 Bukhudman and also with the quantity surveyor and then admire is an engineer so we are both in in engineers um so admire and myself were doing the engineering of the steelwork and the glass and flashing and sort of managing the install mostly on the well on the structure and the cladding but mostly on the cladding stuff um yeah, so the, the project, and if you guys want, I can share my screen and show some pictures now. Yeah, I've, I have the, enabled that, so if you'd like to share, you, you're okay. welcome to do so. I'll just quickly, I'll just I'll run you through, and, and I know you guys have seen the, um, uh, um, you've obviously seen the, the, the write-up, so I, I won't get into too much detail on that. Um, so can, can, you, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, we can. Okay. Cool. Okay, so yeah, so this is just just a just a picture from the from what we looked at last time. I can go through drawings and that, but basically the skylight is 27 meters wide and it is about I mean sorry 17 meters wide and it's about 26 meters. Um, uh, well, it's 17 meters the span and 26 meters long, and it's on a uh, on the on a building in in Parkland West. So what we what we did on that from the design side, I think what I'll maybe do on that is if i don't mind um gerard, gerard do you want to do you want to jump in and maybe just give a quick overview on the project if that would if you if you if you wouldn't mind and just talk maybe about the overall project and then then how the skylight fits in into the overall project yeah so <clears throat> parkland west um, like andrew mentioned it's in men and main um the building is a donut shaped building um so the atrium is, is the focal point in the building. Um, and because of the geometry of the atrium, it's seven stories. So it's actually fairly small. And we wanted a skylight um, that's as see-through or as light as possible um, to get as much light penetration inside. You must remember that the majority of the office floors um, on the perimeter, they have views outside, but all the people sitting next to the atrium, their view is inside. So we wanted a skylight um, that allows for a certain light quality um, in the building. Um, and yeah, I must say, I think, I think we achieved that. Um, Andrew, I don't know whether you want more background. <laughs> I, can, I can actually, what, what I think one of, the, one of the things that made the project work quite nicely is it's, you know, normally, so, you know, projects often, often if they're gonna go well, it's normally from the beginning. So what we did up front on this, which I, which I thought was a really good, process in terms of with 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 Bookerman was to kind of go through a number of concepts so this is just sort of early on what the what you know when when we when we when we first got in got involved with 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 with, with Bookerman was to kind of go over the design intent so the intent that we got was a a, a skylight structure that that could um, obviously as 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 Hera said you know uh, put in light um, um, not too much heat and also not be um, not be too expensive and that was obviously with the with the with the QS going back and forth so you know what we I'll, I'll, I'll go through this quite quickly what we what we did it in color depth is we went through quite a few different solutions so we would we would we would talk to them and say okay well what are your main things okay it's got to not leak it's got to have you know you've got to have as few materials as possible it's got to be in 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 installable so what we would then do is we then spent the next probably two months or, or or three months uh working with working with and coming up with some with with uh, with a few different um options so saying okay well we could do maybe a single sloped um uh, uh truss um and you know which would look something like this and there would be you know there's there's pros and cons with with these kind of solutions and there's a cost 
Um, and so essentially we went through this process um, uh, on I think three or so different solutions and also the idea of different cladding materials. You know, how many cladding materials do, do, do we have and what are the pros and cons of, of different cladding materials? Um, and you know, from our point of view, a big thing is, 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 is leaks. Because on this, on this project, the skylight, you know, typically when we do these skylights, it's either supposed to be a feature element that everyone looks at, um, which you got some weird complex design, or you want it to be as simple and clean as possible. So it's only people like us who really look at it. <laughs> so, and, and this was kind of one of those projects where you want it to be a very clean um, structure that essentially, you know, it's, it's not, it's not shouting for people to look at it, um, but it's something that you want, um, you want it to be maintenance, well, fairly low on, on, on maintenance, and you want it to be, um, at the end of the day, a, 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 a clean solution that can, that can let in light and can create a very nice space un, underneath. So essentially, uh, after... Andrew. Yeah. Sorry, if I might just jump in. Um, yeah. no, this was our first initial um, model that we mm. did and sent through to LEAF. And you can see that was still a curve with al an aluminium substructure. So luckily, LEAF were able to design it without the aluminium substructure, and that allowed for a, a much lighter look. But also, Andrew modeled this, and the focal point um, we, we realized was one and a half meter um, above the atrium floor. So if you had to walk and the sun mm. uh, at a specific point in time, um, you would literally be burned. So yeah, luckily Andrew picked that up and we changed the geometry of the, of the roof. Yeah, so it was, it was a really nice, it was a really nice back and forth between you know, the architect and ourselves and Tuss and the contractor in terms of trying to come up with a way of coming up with a, with a solution. Once we, once we once we had a had a solution, the, the, there were a couple of interesting design aspects on the structural side. So we we wanted to make there was a few things. So we wanted to make the connections look as neat as possible, and this was obviously something that we we we, we worked with Tuss very very closely on. Um, in terms of we wanted to make sure there was as little site welding as possible. So all of the visible connections were bolted um, and the only site welding we had was at the at the perimeter where we connected our structure to the concrete so we had a casting embed that we would then weld a, a, a sleeve onto so we can get x and y tolerance and then we can move up and down to get to get z tolerance um, the 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 concept was essentially we wanted to you know joints are typically where things leak um, so the idea was to have as big a glass panels as we could, so we could cut down on the on the number of joints that we would have. So the the, the panels were 2.2 wide by about 3.3 long. Um, so each panel weighed like 360 kilograms. Um, but so, so it it made the the installation quite tricky. But it made the once the project was installed, there's very few joints. So from a leak. Point of view it's a very robust solution um, we also on the on the detailing of it um, we made it that that all of the glass panels they, 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 there's only two sizes of glass panels so the 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 end bays of the structure were designed so they were a bit smaller so there's there's less attic stock needed so there's only two so the the the, the owners got two um replaced in pieces of 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 glass on that um so regarding the so the the design of the the structure so it's just a it's a, a three pinned um uh, vaulted roof essentially so it was an interesting thing on the installation of the structure um we needed to make sure that it's you know we were trying to balance the temperature load so the the structure had to be able to expand and contract um, so we we had the one bay braced, um, so the the structure was essentially fixed on the one side temperature wise, and the whole thing could 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 can expand and contract out along the the length. Um, but it's also it's a it's a thrusting structure 
along the, the short span. So the structure can, can, can thrust back and forth, so, which meant that we could get uh, fairly light tubes in there. Um, on, the, on the gable ends, what that, what that meant was that we had to have these columns on the gable ends for, for the cladding, um, but we have these columns as, as vertically slotted. So this, this, this end beam can still move up and down um, under, under temperature. Um, so yeah. there's a couple of things. Um, on, yeah, I can talk for ages. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I just wanted to you jump in there. So just, just in terms of the, the, the fabrication and erection process, um, I think yes. maybe Tess would be, be best to answer that. Yes. One. Can you just give us a little bit more detail on that? Marcel, on, on to you. 100%. Um, yeah, guys, so I think um, just between Tess and, and, and Leaf, we've, um, we've worked on a number of projects together. So we started to understand the intricacies, um, obviously very tight tolerance with the glass. Um, so I think we've worked well from, from that point of view. Uh, from the onset, we knew what, what their requirements was. Um, we, we liaised with them. Uh, one of the things we, we do, um, especially on the, on the leaf jobs, is we do a full pre-assembly in the workshop um, mm -hmm. to make sure that everything fits together. Um, especially on the hidden connections, um, there's a lot of times there's, there's, um, we've, we've got tapped holes, um, mm -hmm. which all needs to, to line up. Um, and then once we get to, to the erection part of, part of it, uh, it's it's fairly fairly easy uh, from from the point that we we understand what's what's required and we know that it fit together in the shop. So once we go to site, it's obviously setting out the levels. Um, like Andrew mentioned, um, they've got they've got the tolerance on the on the boxes that we weld on site. Um, those connections, um, and then it's a it's a matter of of lining it up. So I think in this this case, um, one of the more difficult things is working with the tower crane and sharing the tower crane um, with the main contractor. So that's always a bit of a, a issue. Um, but yeah, we worked well together. Um, one of the things was that the tower crane had to be situated in the atrium. So there was a section of the roof that we couldn't install until the time that they removed the tower crane, um, which is which made it a bit difficult because we had to make sure that the portion that we had to fill in um, would fit together once once the tower crane is in and then lift the remaining steel in with with the crane removing the tower crane. So yeah, I think that those, but we, we all liaised together. We um, worked well with the main contractor and I think all of those things, just working as a team together, understanding each other's requirements um, made, it, made it work in the end. Great. Um, you have kind of touched on, on some of the challenges. Were there any other challenges that you had on the project and how did you overcome them? Um, Ed, Ed Meyer, do, do, you want to, do, you want to, do you want to talk a little bit about, the, about the, the, the tolerance and the steel work needing to be at the right levels and the, some of the, of the complications of the, of the install? Okay, thanks, Andrew. Uh, hi, everyone. I think I never had the chance to say hi when I jumped in. Um, like Andrew said, I'm an engineer at Leaf Structures. Um, I'll jump into it. So it was quite interesting, the use of uh, steel on this project in terms of its uh, stiffness. Was you find, I think, for uh, if you went through the report, um, we mentioned that you find the, the, the weight of the glass was about 2.4 times the, the steel. So use of um, the steel structure and its stiffness uh, in terms of as a, as a building material, you have a very good advantage for, 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 for this project. And when you look at um, the installation tolerances, uh, like what Andrew mentioned in terms of the movement uh, due to temperature loads, so we had some uh, quite uh, very high tolerance with regards to about, we had about seven millimeters in terms of sideway movements. And if you, if you look at that pin connection that Andrew showed, there was, it was a sort of a slotted pin with each sides on, uh, on the fork plate, the middle plate, it was about seven millimeters. So it allowed the, the movement from side to side about 50 millimeters. So 50 millimeters on the fork plate on each side. So it allowed movement of 15 millimeters. So on the installation itself, you needed, we needed to put the, the, the fork plate right on the center. That implies if, if we move, let's say five millimeters on the other side, and we move another five millimeters on the other side, now we're out with 10 millimeters. And the glass came with prefabricated holes. 
where the raw tools were going to sit. So we find that we wouldn't be able to, to put the glass inside um, the structure. And what quite, one quite interesting thing about the, um, the glass, the cladding materials was tempered. So any knock on the steel structure would uh, shatter the glass right away. So the tolerance need to be right before lifting. So we, do, we did some checks, tolerance checks, measurements from each point of the roto center to center until we get it right, then we, we do the lifting. Uh, the other thing, like Andrew mentioned, was with regards to, I, I want to sort of speak more of uh, the use of the steel structure on the steel itself as the material on this uh, on the installation side of it, was uh, the, the ability to do a uh, site welding. So we had minimum site welding, and that the fact that we could uh, do quite uh, minimal site welding, that means we had uh, pre-positioned uh, points on uh, with regards to tolerance. So we can mark the point first before we do any site welding, and we, we know that we have fixed our points and our boating, our um, boated connections with the tolerance of the movement that we would want during the installation. So those are quite uh, interesting um, aspects of the use of, uh, of, of steel on this project, which you find more often that you really won't get um, such uh, ratios of steel to cladding materials, the other material, the other building material for, 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 such, uh, for such a geometry. Perfect. Um, I think the last judges, do you have any questions? All good, Franco. Uh, uh, what is the weight of the steel compared to the weight of the of the of the glass? Is as a rough. And Ad Maya, you've got that. Uh, did you have that uh, with you? Uh, the, your your mark's off. <laughs> the steel structure was around uh, seven tons. Uh, roughly, and we were looking at a glass of uh, 2.4 tons of that, which is around 16, 17 tons of, of glass. Okay. That's a pretty large section. I see that it's obviously quite, quite a, because of the, the tube is quite effective, obviously it's, it's very, very large and supports a lot of, a lot of glass, in fact. Yeah, that was quite interesting in terms of also the geometry of the tube and the wide ranges of uh, steel geometry that you can get with regards to the, the stiffness of what we could uh, do with, uh, with, with steel uh, sections. Yeah, but, uh, with, with the, I think Spencer sorry. might have a question because he's unmuted himself. Uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Andrew, what happens at the apex connection between the glass? Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you not get a change in angle at that um, central pin? Yeah, yes, you do. So, so what we did, so one of the big things on the, and this was kind of going back to the architectural one, what we wanted to do was have a single sheet of glass with, um, with, with just silicone joints in between. So what we've got there is there is, the, at the apex, because it's pinned, there is going to be some movement up and down. Um, yes. And the, there is obviously, as the, beam, as the beams bend, there, there's also some movement um, um, uh, b between glass panels. So what we've got there is these, the, we've got a silicone joint. So the main thing, with this project was I said everything came down to millimeters. So the glass joint had to be 20 millimeters a gap. So even, even on the apex one, it was, a, it was a 20 millimeter gap. So we had an extruded silicone um, gasket we'd, we'd put in from the underside and then we would, we would wet seal with a, with, a, um, with a silicone, with a weather seal silicone um, that has got a plus minus 50% movement allowance. Um, okay. It can it can accommodate so it's a, it's a twenty mil gap, so it can accommodate essentially ten mils of movement up uh, side to side. So that that accounts for temperature plus um, any 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 movements of the structure. So it's it's the same detail that we use when we do cable wall projects. So when we've got these tension uh, uh, cables and then we attach glass onto. So those those structures are very flexible. So we have to look at the so the glass joints can can move. One of the one of the criteria that was the most critical on the installation of the of the um, of the glass, and that is it. That goes in line with what we're doing. Was the um, was the when 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 somebody's actually walking on the roof. So what happens with with, with that when someone's walking on the roof? The 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 whole structure moves. But you also get the glass moving. So I don't know if you can if you can still see my screen here. Yeah. So this is kind of in line with the question, Spencer, just on the on the movement. So there was 
the movements obviously of the structure, how that affects the glass. And there, there was also movements of the glass itself. So this is, this is just a violent element plot of a 100 kilogram point load at the corner and how much the glass moves. So you can see the glass moves 17 millimeters. So a big part of this, of the installation was how do we, how do we walk around on the glass um, so as not to, once the, once the silicone is set, it can move this amount easily. But when we install it, we need to make sure that we were distributing load, that you didn't have too much um, movement at the, at the joints when you, uh, when you before the, the silicone is, uh, is set. Um, so that was, that was, that, that, that took quite a lot of time and energy, just making sure that you could, that the glass wasn't moving too much when we were installing it. Gerard, um, can you give us a little bit of a, of a description of what the brief for the structure was and, and how steel played a role in achieving that brief? Yeah, so Denise, um, the majority of, of the buildings that, that I've, I've built is um, donut shed atrium buildings. Um, and previously what we've done is just uh, angles, which we had to clad afterwards. But it, it, it makes for a very heavy structure. And on this building, and as I mentioned earlier, the geometry of the atrium is such, it's seven stories high and it's fairly compact. So we wanted to, from a spatial experience, create a space with a certain light quality. And as such, luckily, Leaf was able to do a very transparent and uh, yeah, almost invisible structure. And I think that's, that's, for me, the beauty in the structure is almost that it's invisible. Um, so yeah, the, the brief really to, to Leaf and how we developed it was to make it as simple as possible. Um, and I think that's where the beauty of the steel members actually came into, into uh, being. Uh, we also painted it uh, a light color so that when you look up, um, that you don't really see, um, see the structure as much. If I can make a comment, Gerard, I think the, the first thing I said when I saw the pictures of your structure was, gosh, the steelwork is so unobtrusive, it's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. No, it makes it quite special, I must say. It, 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 it's perhaps even too efficient. If I if I did my maths right, you said seven hundred and fifty kilograms. How much how much steel did you, did you say there was? Because per square meter, it's it's a very very effective roof. Eh? Very Hello. effective. Come again on the question. I think. No, I just said I said the the, the the mass per square meter of the steel is 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 ex extremely low. Eh? Yeah, highly. Yeah, but of course, Franco, you've got no purlins and you've got no um, cross bracing in the roof and all the other widgets and digits we'd expect in an ordinary steel roof. And I must say, I mean, uh, like I said earlier, when we started the model, obviously we modeled an aluminium substructure for the, for the glazing panels. Um, and I think it's great that we could get rid of them um, so that you just have the steel and the pinnacle connections because it makes for a very light structure. Yeah, just just one of the things, just, just adding on to that, that we also spoke about upfront architecture was the maintenance, the, the access to the structure on, on the inside for, 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 for cleaning later. So one of, the, one of the reasons why we wanted to push the... So the, the, there's about a... 50 mil gap from the top of the steelwork to the underside of the glass. Um, and one of, the, one of the advantages of doing that is, well, there were two. So one is that we can have some tolerance and we can attach the glass because, because we're not doing, excuse my dogs outside, um, because we're not doing uh, mullions, we wanted to, you know, you can't hide anything. So you have to have some tolerance to get the glass on, but also from a, interior maintenance point of view you can get rope access you can get slings between the glass and the structure so you don't need to hang eye hooks onto the structure and that was something that we spoke about up front quite a lot and we spoke to some rope access teams on that to make sure because the, the eye hooks um they we've done it on some on past projects and they're quite noticeable um and they need to be tested every year so it becomes quite a quite a quite a um Quite a thing for a client to maintain. So that was another reason for 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 trying to have the glass a bit up and not have mullions. So you could you could maintain it. 
Great. Um, we've got about 10 minutes left for, for wrap up and questions. So perhaps, you know, if, what, if she, each of the project team members could just let us know, what are you, you most proud of on this project? And what do you think from a technical perspective went best? I've, well, well, I was involved mostly on the on the design and from the upfront, like the pre-construction section of the project. So what was a good success, like Andrew mentioned before, was to go through the project with uh, Bukhatman and with Wilherat in quite a bit of detail upfront. So to look at what they provided initially, to look at how we can then improve upon the shape, because initially it was it was a glass and sheeting um, a roof structure initially. That's what the atrium was going to look like. So then to go through the process of looking at the details that where we look at sheeting and the connection between the sheeting and the glass and what that detail would look like, how it would affect the waterproofness of the skylight was also quite important to, to obviously explain to the architects and then have reasons for why we might want to take the sheeting out. And then coming up, obviously it was, it was I think it was like by draft five um, of, the, <laughs> of, the, of the roof that we'd all decided, okay, so the sheeting is now out, it's all glass. What options are available as far as having opaque pieces of glass if we do need that for, for the shading aspect and if it was required. So it, for me, that, that process was what was most successful was the back and forth, because often it doesn't happen. Um, <laughs> but it was good that it did in this way because we went through all the ways in which design-wise we could meet the requirements, but also get the QS involved to talk about costing because obviously you can come up with really great designs but if they don't fit anybody's budget then it's uh, great on paper but it'll never get built so that was for me the success that we could all meet halfway and, and come up with a really great atrium. Great. Harold, do you want to tell us what, uh, what worked best for you? Uh, um, if I may, I just want to share my screen. Um, yeah, so this is the initial perspective that we sold to the clients. Um, and you can see we try to, the, the atrium geometry is very, it's, it's fairly compact. Um, and you can see the, the initial roof that we modeled in. And the eventual one, if I can just skip to the next photo. Um, sorry. So this is the as built. So you can see for me, from what we had envisioned to, to the actual outcome, um, and I mean, obviously, this is now winter time. The amount of solar ingress um, during winter, um, there's no light penetration to the atrium floor. Um, so it, this is almost the darkest point in terms of, uh, of the atrium during a year. Um, but I think from initial concept to how it ended up, um, yeah, I think that's, mm. that's what's for me quite, quite amazing. Mm. Uh, Marcel, do you want to let us know what, what worked best for you and what you're most proud of in this project? Yeah, so I think, I think from our side, um, what, what works well is, um, you know, all, all the, like I said, we work quite well together from the start, getting all the intricacies um, sorted out, all the, the tolerances, um, uh, pre-assembling the, the structure in the shop. Um, and, and seeing it work out on site without, without somebody, uh, any oversights, um, you know, the, everything fitted like it should. Um, and yeah, I think just from, from our side, obviously, uh, the complete project overall, you know, we, we, we're proud of, of the overall project. If, if, you, if you have a look at it, um, you know, just, just all working together. Um, I think the skylight works, you know, it just looks it lo looks great, so, so yeah. Ed Meyer, do you want to let us know what, what you're most proud of in this project? Um, what I'm most proud of on this project was more of, um, I would say, the attention to detail and the high level of coordination that, uh, that uh, took place on, on this project. Um, like uh, everyone has mentioned from the uh, conceptual design of it and going from into the fabricate, the detailed design of the steel structure, looking into the tolerances that we involved, the flexibility of the material that was used. And um, if you go into the fabrication, when we did our tolerance check in, in, in the warehouse at the fabrication level, and at the installation, uh, mind you, we had two different um, sort of installation um, teams with regards to the steel structure being installed by one team and the glass being installed by other team. So the coordination between those two teams with regards also mm -hmm. to the tolerance, we're talking about seven millimeters and, and, and those teams 
making sure that we achieve that well, that was quite a, the most amazing thing on this project. Right. Judges, do you have any final questions? We've got about three minutes before we need to wrap up because we can gonna just get cut off, you know how Zoom is. Um, yes, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> from, from 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 my side what i'm what i'm what i'm most proud about is i guess the, it, it's the the shared vision throughout the whole team i mean obviously we just got the design people here but from the installers from the fabricators from the you know the, the teams making the components i think it was one of these things where often there's people with different different strengths coming in and sometimes they can butt heads and not actually get on but to me i thought it was it was a positively compounding thing where the different different people's strengths actually added to the thing. So we had our installers helping guide us on the front end on the design in terms of how do how do we make it easier to 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 build. We had a lot of the 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 functionality from 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 Gerald's side, from Gerald's side, the functionality driving the the project through and the installers knowing what the end product's supposed to look like before they started. So it was a very much it, it 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 felt like everyone was moving in the same direction, but also still giving their opinions and us having robust conversations on what we think works better. And I think that the end product shows that I think it was a combination of a lot of people giving their opinions and doing a great job. So to me, that's what I'm what I'm most proud of on this.